You're watching Democratically Speaking. Mark Linder, your host. Um, we're doing this for the Brockton Democratic City Committee, of which I'm the chair, and I'm doing this on my volunteer time. I have a new face to Brockton politics, someone you've seen from the preliminary election going into the final election, Susan DeCastro. Welcome, Susan. Nice to see you. Thank you very much, Mark. How's the campaign going? Um, the campaign, they say it's running for office. It's really marathoning for office. I think it's going well. It's hard for me to tell. I'm just out there working every day as hard as I can. Now, in between, a job, correct? Yes, I'm You're working. You're an attorney. Although not, not very much, but I am working some, yes. Okay. Kids are at school. The kids are at school. They do call you only when they have problems, generally. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can't put them to work because they're busy with school, right? No, I can't. But John's, John's helping you, right? My husband is helping when he can. Yes, he's Certainly, he's my sign man every Saturday morning, replacing disappeared signs. Oh, and, and Halloween's coming up. New. Halloween's yeah. coming up. That's the scariest time of all year for candidates. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. I always think they should make the election the Tuesday before Halloween, not sure. the Tuesday after Halloween. So, what are you hearing when you're going out there talking to people? You're knocking on doors. You're, you have events that you've scheduled. You've participated in, like, the Brockton Housing Authority yes. meet and greets. Yeah. What are you hearing from the, the, the voters? Well, first of all, they're very nice because they open the door and they're very kind to me. Often I'm invited inside and um, I've just been so pleased with the reception I've gotten from strangers, people who don't know me as well as people who know me a little bit and people who heard through word of mouth. The, the uh, issues that they talk to me about are crime, of course, crime and, and fear. They're, they're afraid. Um, I, I knocked at several houses that are actually for sale, and I was told some of the people were seniors, but, but some of the people said, we were concerned about our children, we're going to leave the city. And that's so sad. With one family, I found myself just gently trying to say, why don't you give, give it some time, see what happens. And, but you can't really do that because it's, it's, you know, you're concerned about them. Public safety is not an issue you mess with. Mm -hmm. Now, tell me, I was at the mayoral debate last night. I was a panelist. I asked the two candidates, one that said we should do things differently, the challenger to the mayor, the other the mayor. What, it, what has he done that he feels is successful? How about I ask you that question? You're going to be a counselor at large. You deal with the police budget. You don't set the budget. You react to the budget. That's right. Okay. But what do you think we can do differently about crime and, and change the perception of people in Brockton? My parents did the same thing. They moved to Easton. They left and they wanted me to leave with them. As a matter of fact, they waited till I bought my house six months and then they sold the house I grew up in. I wasn't too happy about it, but they gave up happy. kind of on Brockton. Mm -hmm. So what would you do differently? Well, I understand the limits of the city council's um, ability to influence the police department. But I also know that there are some really good people, some of whom I'm acquainted with, on the police department. And the approach that I have, I started talking about when we had our last debate on Columbus Day. Um, and I, I should tell you, and it would probably take two mo longer than you have, um, I've had the experience of walking on a main street that I live off of and having cars fly by and we walk, a friend and I walk in the mornings and we carry our cell phones and we call the police um, and we never got through to anyone but we always left messages and we we haven't seen a policeman picking up speeders on our street in two years I'd say. Well one day a policeman was driving by slowly and so I jumped out in front of him to stop him and he was very nice and I explained to him my concerns because you see when we walk in the morning there are a lot of families from Copeland Street and the side streets off Copeland Street, the main street I live off of, who are waiting for the bus to pick up their children and not only do they have their school age children but they have little ones who are dancing around and waiting impatiently to go back home. And um, so I explained all this to the policeman very nicely and he said oh, we don't do that anymore. We'll get you a, a machine. So within two weeks, a machine was placed at a few blocks down from us on Copeland Street, and it would register the speed per hour that a car passing by would go. 
And so for the couple of weeks that that machine was there, we got to watch people speed up and laugh because it was warm weather when they were clocked at going 59 or 61 on Copeland Street, a street where the max is 30 miles an hour. And so I started reading and thinking about it and, and you know, just why, why is it that this isn't important? And, and please, I understand violent crime is important, I do. And what I came up with was coincidentally the same thing that the ad current administration was pursuing a few months ago. Um, I came up with Bill Bratton, who used to be in Boston and is now in New York after forays in Los Angeles. And in the early 90s, when he first went to New York City, he embraced what was called broken windows theory. And he had his police force focus on low-level crimes, vandalism, um, people jumping the turnstiles in the subway, school truancy, um, break-ins break in cars, things that usually the police set aside when there's a lot of upper crimes, more, more serious crimes. Because what he found, and he proved it, and it's been proven continually, is that when you focus on the low-level crimes, you actually pick up a lot of the bad guys who are doing the higher crimes. Mm -hmm. And also, too, by doing that and by cleaning up your community, um, repairing broken windows, that's why it's called the, that for the theory, you, you not only address crime and make people feel safer, but you make the community feel better about being there. You make the community notice the appearance, the improved appearance, and work more positively together. And it really works. Mm -hmm. Now, the big race seems to be the mayor's race. Yes. Councilors at large represent the entire city of Brock. There are eight of you running for four seats. Yes. Three of them are current office holders, and the other five are challengers. Yes. Okay? Um, people have talked about there being one open seat. Well, there's one departing councilor that chose not to run again, but there's actually four seats. Do you think people get that? Do you think people understand when they go out and vote, even to vote for four? The people that I've been speaking to do understand it. Now, I should tell you, I'm one of the candidates who has been saying that I'm running for the open councilor at large seat. Uh, I think a lot of our incumbents, I wouldn't presume to be saying I'm knocking you out, I hope to knock you out of your seat. I'm going for that open seat. Um, and I do think people understand that it's a citywide election. You remind them of that when you talk to them mm -hmm. one after another. Um, what I didn't realize when I started doing this was the breadth of the city. This is one big city when you're doing it one block at a time. It really is. I'm humbled by it. I, I really am. I'm trying as hard as I can. But um, it's really a big city. But I do think people get about four, voting for four and having eight to choose from. And a fair number of people have said to me on the phone, because I have been calling um, voters, um, well, who's running or who are you running against? So I, I, I regularly hear that perhaps they're not as aware. And then they hear some of the incumbents' names and say, oh, yes, that's right. I, I know him. And Politics 101 is not ever saying the name of your opponent? Well, you try not to, okay, but, Because they you know, do ask. I, I know. Right. I'm, I'm an educator, so that's I want right. to do that, too. Mm -hmm. So how do you differentiate yourself from the rest of the pack? What is your, I don't know, your number one quality? What makes you unique in terms of why people should vote for you? Well, I'm an attorney. Last year I finished five years on the planning board, two years on the zoning board. I'm a 16-year volunteer at a local charity, including as a past president of the board. Um, I'm, I'm not a newcomer to the city. I'm here 25 years, and I've been paying attention for 20 years. Um, I won't have the learning curve that some people have had coming to the city council. I've been around the last 20 years. I haven't been missing in action. Um, I understand currently, because cities, like people, change with every generation. I understand who this city is right now, and I feel like I'm a part of the city, and understanding that and how City Hall works, I, f I really feel I can hit the ground running and contribute in a positive way. And I very much want to. I feel very comfortable representing the entire city. I understand it. Now, 
Sometimes it's dog eat dog. It is. Okay. You fully understand what you're getting yourself into, right? Um, I don't think anyone fully understands it until they get there. I mean, look at President Obama. The poor man is so gray now. Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, Planning Board is a place that a lot of people got to start. Robert Sullivan yes, Linda was Belzotti. on the planning board. Linda mm -hmm. Belzotti was on the planning board. Mm -hmm. uh, different people come from different walks of life to, to get to the next office up. What do you think isn't working now and what might you want to seek change with as one member of an 11 member city council? So when you ask that question, do you mean an issue? Do you mean procedurally? I, I, I want an issue. Let's talk about an issue. Okay. Any specific issue that maybe you didn't like what you saw. Maybe you want to do it differently. Maybe you would bring something different to the table. Okay. Well, I have spoken to you uh, before about... Um, I, I'm concerned about the city council having its own council on issues that come in front of it of a financial nature. And I did some research and learned that Chapter 324 of the Acts of 1990 which created the financial department within City Hall, it was a home rule petition because it wasn't covered by our charter or our ordinance, provides the City Council with the services of the auditor, the City Auditor, who is supposed to, when asked by the City Council, give an independent opinion of financial matters that come in front of the City Council. I don't think they call on it. I, I've never seen them call on it, and yet I think that's a very important check and balance to have. As I understand it from doing some reading and asking, the finance department was created with checks and balances to it. The, the uh, CFO is supposed to report to the mayor and work with the mayor um, and answer to the mayor, whereas this auditor has specific tasks, one of which is to respond to the city council's request for financial reviews. I think that's a wonderful thing to fall back on. I would love to see that moved more, used more often, utilized. Well, there's been proposals out there to look at city government, look at the structure of city government, and study it, and maybe even make recommendations for change. Now, I know the auditor is the clerk to the finance committee, mm -hmm. okay? But like you said, I, I've, I've only seen her or previous auditors in that role advising the finance committee. The council has its own legislative council. You have That's your right. own attorney That's right. where the mayor has the city office of the city solicitor to mm -hmm. represent the city. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's something I haven't heard before. That's, uh, that's, that's true. That is very interesting. Section 6. And, mm -hmm. and leave it to a lawyer, no offense, leave it to a lawyer to look it up and find out because if you look at our charter and you look at our ordinances, they're online, but not everybody's familiar with them. We've, we've had some really good attorneys on the city council. I, I, I think yeah. Mr. Sullivan, sure. as he likes to say, does his due diligence oh, every sure. day. And I think he does. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, having more than one, you get more than one opinion, right? Right. Well, it's funny you should say that about our charter is online because it's not very easy to find. It used to be that our charter and our city ordinances were, were accessible by going to the city's website. They're not there anymore. And it took me about four phone calls to figure out that you have to go on www.municode.com and then look up Brockton, Massachusetts to find our ordinances mm. and our charter. Okay. Mm. Um, I don't, and there's no reference to that on the city website that I was able to find. How about so that? So there have been a lot of positive changes with the city website, but maybe that's something that needs to be looked at again. I think it should be easily um, obtainable. Because back in the day, the only way to really do it is you either had to buy them or yes. you went to the public library yes. where they had a copy of the ordinances. But yes. online, everybody looks for everything online now. They do. Okay. Um, let me ask you a question. Uh, the council is on TV every yes. Monday night. Okay. G open government has meetings on television. That's right. School committee as well. How do you feel about that in terms of TV? I'm just curious because there's been commentary about it not being on TV, and um, I personally think more of it should be on. There are other boards and commissions that aren't on TV. Um, in a, a lot of other municipalities, especially the cities, um, more of the board meetings are televised. The planning board, the zoning board, the licensing board. 
I think it's great for people who don't go out at night. And even people who work at night, get, they can access it, you know, online or, um, or um, you know, when it's replayed. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great thing. As for me, I'm getting a little better at, you, you can see that today, I'm getting a little better at not freezing in front of a camera. Um, I haven't done a lot of this. I've kind of evolved as we've started this process. Uh, I think it's important to be on camera. I mean, the city council meetings, I think it's, that coverage is very important. Now, councils at large, like we talked about, represent the whole city. Mm -hmm. Your city councils do their ward meetings. Mm -hmm. Some of your councils at large go to those meetings. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not referring to this specific city council, but in the past, some of the other ones, long gone, didn't. How are you going to communicate as a councilor at large? How are you going to get your word out and have the public give you feedback? Well, I've been having a good experience having a Facebook page since I started um, running for this position. And I've gotten some very good com comments on Facebook. And so I think I will continue with the Facebook page. I also have a website, but I haven't used it very much. Mm -hmm. um, the messages that are sent to me there are forwarded to another um, email account that I do check daily, sometimes hourly. Mm -hmm. um, I think we have a tremendous deficit in the city, communication. I know since beginning to run for office, I have to look in six different places to find out what's going on in a given weekend or during the week. And I don't think it should be that way. And I would like, on my little scratch to-do list when I'm elected, communication is very important. I know in other communities there's a, uh, what is it called, the patch. Right. There's a patch and everything goes on there, municipal as well as social and school-wise. And I think that's a nice, nice service they're providing. I would love to see Brockton have something like that. I even think your website. Mm -hmm. You you don't you, do you have one again now? It's You're still being working rebuilt. On it. We've right. been using our Facebook in the meantime. Right. But um, what I'm hoping to get again is there used to be a community calendar that the Rotary Club did. Yes. It's based like on the one that the library does, yes. but it was citywide, and the gentleman who ran it passed away. Oh. But he also passed away with all the codes to it. Sure. He bought the domain. It was BrocktonCalendar.com. It was easy to remember. Sure and it was Rotary, it was BCA, and the city contributed to it. He bought it for a multi-year contract. We can't, we can't get it, so we're going to have to call it something else. But one thing you would have available to you as a city official is communication on the government channel. I make okay. the offer every, every two years to all the people, and everybody tells me they're going to take me up on it. Um, the one that's taken me up on it the most is the mayor. The mayor has made sure that he's communicated on television. I'm hoping that the councillors at large, the councillors and the school committee members will take me up on that offer. Well, I think the mayor from his years of, of, being, of having a radio show, he is a communication and media savvy and I think that's been an asset for him, honestly. But I think the whole city needs to be communication savvy. We all need to be wired in together. When we had one of our earlier debates, I think it was the one that was at the NAACP, um, one of our challengers who unfortunately didn't make the cut in the primary, Scott Hall, mentioned he was asked the question, there's $2 million left over in the budget, what would you spend it on? And Scott, who is um, a computer guy, an analyst, um, a programmer, said, I would spend that money on a system that would connect the entire municipality from the school system to city hall uh, to your you, you know your cable channel everything would be connected and it would work so smoothly and it would save so much money in the end and I thought it was a very good answer sounds like George Jetson back in the day yes, I'm, now does. I'm really dating myself yes, I'm, I'm still waiting to push that button and the meal is made for me because mm -hmm. I can't cook mm -hmm. um, what surprised you during the campaign as you've been talking to people. You, you, you learned about the, as you said, the breadth and depth of the city. Yes. What else? Um, I was surprised because I, I had an idea of the city. I had a sense from going to properties to review when we had applications in front of us. So I would go and walk the land, as we say in real estate, before a, a planning board or a zoning meeting. Um, I was surprised by the number of, of lovely neighborhoods. You know, we. Brockton gets such a bad press. And if there is some way to hire a PR firm or a communications department 
to get out the word about what a great city this is. Most of this city is actually comprised of lovely neighborhoods and that you know, most of the, the houses are very well kept and people are very proud to live here. Uh, and that surprised me going all over. I didn't know about as many neighborhoods as I've since um, become familiar with. Also, what surprised me is um, I've been disappointed by some of the negative comments that are being made in, in the different races. That's been too bad. Um, but, you know, we're getting close to the deadline. I guess people are getting tense and um, these things happen. Negative campaigning, it, it's pervasive at every level of, of politics, I guess, and we do see some of it in Brockton. That's have disappointing. Have you seen it in your race specifically? Um, not, not particularly, mm -hmm. no. Okay. And for myself, you know, I answer people very honestly about the differences between me and the other candidates, um, but not, not yet anyway that I'm aware of, and I hope I don't see it. What about um, the big issues for you? We, we, you go to the debates and because there's eight people or 13 people, there almost isn't enough time mm -hmm. to really have a substantive discussion about the issues. Mm -hmm. Some of them are everything's old is new again. We're still talking about the issues. Mm -hmm. what, are you, what are your issues? I mean, you have your punch card right there. I do. Um, what maybe haven't we talked about it says right on there Susan's agenda so yes. tell me remind me what's on there I've seen it but I, I, I haven't looked at it since the debate it's fair to say that I think all eight candidates for counselor at large share priorities public safety safety in our homes and our streets economic development bringing new businesses to uh, employ our residents and pay them a living wage um, they're mine too um, I'm concerned about education. There have been cuts in our education budget and real people suffer when that happens, our children. Um, I, I was asked to fill out a, a questionnaire by Brockton Education Association and they asked what, what is the issue. Well, as a city councilor, I know what my limitations are in reviewing their budget and taking away or proving as is or rejecting, but as a, as a, a resident, talking to friends and former teachers and people that I door knock. The issue, of, an issue that keeps coming up is the size of classrooms. There's just so many kids packed into classrooms. In some instances I'm told the kids have to get there or else they don't get a seat, they sit on the floor. That's, that's a hard way to teach and that's a hard way to learn. So that's, that's an issue for me that I'm very concerned about. Do you think, I, I'm, I'm going to just stop for one minute, I don't mean to derail you, but I, you're an attorney. Yes. The school committee and the mayor are contemplating a lawsuit against the Commonwealth to look at the Chapter 70 formula again. Brockton doesn't get money at a certain point when kids come in after October 1st. After the October cutoff. Education reform started in Brockton. I know when you're not running for school committee and I know the council doesn't get to weigh in on the thing, but what are you as a parent uh, as, as a resident of Brockton think about that? It, we impacted greatly education reform in the Commonwealth. Do you think we should do it again? Well, I, I, think, I think it's very important that we find a way to get this money, to get the October 1 deadline to bend, given that we and other gateway cities have so many children that come in throughout the school year that, that require extra services. Many of them come in, they speak no English at all. They've never been in a school system of this size. So they need more help, and we have to pay for it. Um, I, I think as an attorney I can say to you that suing a litigation case should be our last resort. Absolutely has to be. I would try partnering with other gateway cities, uh, you know, their delegation and our delegation at the State House. I would go up myself and testify. I'd do everything I could short of suing and leave that as our last, you know, our, our last resort. Okay. I interrupted you, so okay. what other agenda items? I'm concerned about our elders, about them being safe, about their well-being. Um, we have a terrific Council on Aging here. We have a lot more elders that are able to fit in that Council on Aging. I'm hoping that they will be able to find the funding, and I'd like to help them to expand. They, they have a proposal to build on to the existing building to be able to fit more seniors in there for more activities. I think it's a great idea. 
I'm also concerned about our elders aging in place, being able to stay in their homes as long as possible. They're going to need additional services that I would like to have a hand in, you know, getting them together with the service givers so that they can stay here and be our residents for as long as possible. Um, I'm concerned about the opioid drug problems. I was driving down this way a couple of days ago and I watched a drug deal go down on Main Street. Um, you know, it happens quite often in the neighborhood around the charity that I volunteer at. Um, it, it's got to stop. People's lives, family lives are being ruined by it. We, we've got to do all we can at the state level to get the money to, to uh, help these people. It's an addiction. It's a, it's a me medical problem. It's a health problem and it, you know, le less than a crime problem and we've got to work on that. The seniors you mentioned, lowest funded budget in the city. Yeah. Again, the mayor sets the budget. Yes. It's, a prior it's a priorities issue, okay? Everybody talks about public safety being number one mm. and you need the funding and I think the mayor's on record saying he hasn't heard anyone say to not give the police department money. Okay, that's, that's his quote. I want to know where the other stuff fits in. The seniors, the library. I asked the question, I'm yes, biased, yes. I'll be totally honest about it. I've been on the board for close to 20 years. We've been cut before, we've come back from the past. We luckily got some money from the Library Foundation. The city kicked in some as well. We're still funded and we're not decertified like other communities around the area. Right. But how do you balance that? How, how would you advocate for your priors, like the senior one you just talked about, what would you do to get to help the seniors? Well, I'd sit down with Janice Fitzgerald, for starters, and with some of the people that, she, that staff the Council on Aging to talk to them about it because they are the elder experts on site. Um, it's absolutely true. There will always be more line items for the budget there, that there, than there will be money. We have to get clever, perhaps. You know, the, Crime is our biggest issue. If we can control and reduce our crime, surely more companies will be interested in coming here to have businesses, which will boost our economy and employ our people. You know, definitely they will help us trend up. Um, but from there, we have all these quality of life issues. These are the things that affect us, our children, our seniors, families. They, they have to get attention. I've told you before, I'm very big on libraries. Um, libraries benefit our children and our elders as, as well as families. They're great meeting places. Um, they, they can't go away. Well, we'll talk to you when, when, if, when and if you're elected, yes. okay? You got the floor now. You get to look at the camera, talk to your constituents, tell them why Susan Castro, and what do we got left, Mike, about, I'm going to give you a minute 30. How's that? Okay, I'll try to fit that. Well, my name is Susan Nicastro. I'm running for the open councillor at large seat on the Brockton City Council. My name is listed sixth on the ballot under councillor at large. So it's six for Susan, Susan Nicastro. I'd like to be your next city councillor at large because I have the experience, the training, the passion, and the vision to be a good city councillor at large. I welcome the opportunity to represent all parts of the city because I've lived here 25 years. I'm a trained professional. I'm an attorney. We need people on the council who will read the volumes of information that come in front of them, ask a lot of questions, and, and be willing to take stands for our residents. Um, and, and I'm willing to do that. I'm also very interested in our financial issues. Um, so many people talk to me about how our tax money is spent, how our resources will be used. I, I will follow through. I, I will make you proud, but I need your vote on Election Day. Thank you, Susan. Thanks for being here. Thank you. And we'll be following all the elections in the city, the mayor's race, the councilor at large race, city council, school committee. Stay tuned for coverage on Brockton Community Access. On behalf of Democratically Speaking, thanks for joining us.